Oh, Beam's back. We hey, everyone. Are, Sorry about that. We are slowly starting. Right, yeah, I think... I'm not sure we're going to have a massive turnout today because we didn't really tweet much about this until this morning. Um, but yeah, welcome to another ACF Chat Fridays. We are joining you today. We've got Liam, we've got Matt, we've got Anthony from the engineering team. We've got Damon from DevRel. I am Ian, the product manager, as usual. Uh, we are recording this session and we're going to put it up on the uh, the blog uh, when we we now actually have a dedicated page for our Chat Fridays where you can kind of follow along with previous sessions much easier, uh, which is here. And always get the latest registration link so we don't need to be sending out small, uh, small shorter links all the time. What are we going to cover today? I think we're going to talk about the upcoming 6.2 release, which uh, if you've been coming to the last couple of sessions, you'll have already heard about the bidirectional relationship um, functionality that we demoed last time. Uh, and Matt did a demo of the options page stuff rec recently in the chat Friday, and Damon did one in the web event. Um, but as always, if you want to post any questions in chat, we can cover them. Uh, maybe we can just go through the uh, release post or the release, what's in the release, and then we can also just do open, you know, stick your hand up, unmute, uh, feel free to ask a question. But let me just see what, ah, actually, probably a good thing to cover off as well. I don't know if uh, you had seen it, but we released ACF 618 earlier this week, which has a security fix in it, not necessarily a critical like hypercritical fix, but with 6.2 around the corner, we wanted just to get the security fix out the door as soon as possible. So that's in 6.1.8. Um, and if you are running the beta, uh, beta one of 6.2, we released the uh, RC1 of 6.2, which includes the security fix. Uh, if you, So if you're running the beta, go and get RC1 and you'll, you'll be secured and protected if you're running the beta on a live site so that's that one um what else have we got so let me just share my screen is it a live demo time in it's not a live demo i'm okay. just gonna share i'm just gonna share my uh share my browser window is that you've seen that yet Uh, what is Zoom telling me? Right, so the beta one release post, uh, even though we've obviously now just done RC1 yesterday, um, contains like the majority of the info about the release, which when we do the, the proper release of 6.2, which is coming soon, probably in weeks rather than uh, months. Like it, it's, it's around the corner. Um, we'll move some of this information to documentation and to the release post. But yeah, the, the one of the big things is bidirectional fields or relational fields. So you can now have a new tab setting which turns on bidirectional for a relationship field, a post object field, a user field, a taxonomy field, and it saves the data of that uh, of the connection both ways on on both objects. Um, oh yeah, this is the options page UI. So if you hadn't seen this before, the options page uh, is a feature of or options pages is a feature of ACF Pro, which allows you to create uh, new pages in the WordPress admin that contain ACF fields for kind of global or site-wide uh, site fields that you want your content editors to fill out. Um, and you can create new pages easily within the UI in 6.2 because previously you had to use a code snippet. So catch up on uh, Damon's, Damon's event there. If you want to see, there's, Let's zoom gone again. Let's chat gone. Honestly, zoom. That's the, the, the release post. Yeah, lots of videos out this week. So options pages, that is great. Uh, and another sort of thing that we perhaps haven't talked about as much on Chat Fridays is uh, what's coming 6.2 is the ability to um, 
if you're loading JSON files for different field groups or maybe even custom post types, but probably more than likely different JSON files for field groups uh, outside of your theme, you may be doing it for uh, a plugin that stores loads of ACF blocks and you'd want the field group definitions for those blocks to be stored separately. We now are fully supporting multiple JSON paths, including the ability to, when you're loading uh, a, a path for the, a JSON file from a different um, path, we're actually gonna save it back to that correct path. Uh, which is something that hasn't been really possible up until now. So it makes abstracting your field groups into different plugins or different parts of your theme um, to organize them a, a bit better, makes it now just work uh, a lot easier without any workarounds. So I think that's kind of like a developer quality of life thing that's been hanging around for a while. Uh, what else have we done? So we've done, yeah, yeah just, just to say, the, yeah, uh, the that JSON stuff, it's really cool. Like uh, I've been playing with it a lot locally. Um, and obviously we have a whole bunch of like test plugins and themes and stuff like that, that we use as, as devs to test everything out. Um, and it just means like I've got it saving uh, options pages and field groups uh, and post types all to separate folders, all named now to something that makes sense to me. And then you can use a, a new field we added in the release candidate yesterday that lets you set the file name as well. So it doesn't have to be key.json anymore. It just it kind of all works nicely. It's a, it's a really cool feature. Yeah, that's nice. The, 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 um, the filter for the file names is actually quite a big one, actually. That was, yeah, a, a good call out from somebody who tested the beta. Uh, yeah, and we fixed some stuff in the beta. One of the, we like we've got for the custom post type and taxonomy registration, the UI, part of it we have a filter to disable the options page ui if you're not using that and if you don't want that to be in the ui so that that was broken slightly now it works depending on when you are calling it uh and yeah that is the field uh, the safe file name filter security fix some other fixes so we're pretty we're pretty close to to getting 62 out the door which is good um has anyone been testing it has anyone got any um issues reactions um requests uh hi um i've not been not been testing but i when i read read this um i uh have a couple of questions um things that piqued my interest uh can I just go ahead and kind of... Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Go for it, yeah. Excellent. Well, originally, yeah, so the thing I was most interested in actually was the the uh, the JSON save paths. Um, so, no, I only read this, I think, yesterday, and I've not I've not tested it, so I don't know what it actually looks like. But I wondered, is there a... Is there, is there UX for this, um, or is it just hooks and filters at the moment? Like, if I'm building, if I'm building a field in the back end, um, can I, at that point choose where it's going to save and off the back of that i wanted to because i've been using a, a third party plugin for quite a few years which does which does exactly that and i guess it was it was leveraging existing functionality which i've never i've never used directly only through this through, through this plugin so within your field settings you can choose you have to set the path so i've got various sites where i've got a theme and like three plugins which all might have different different field sets in for instance, uh, you know, an events plugin, which includes the events post type and any fields that relate to, to that to that post type. So so when I'm building that plugin, I preset that save path within the plugin and that's available within within the UX in ACF. And I suppose I wondered, is the is the multiple JSON save locations going to have um, a UI like that, if not now or in the future? Or is it all do you have to kind of create the field? And then go into your plugin and say, I want this field with this key to go into this place. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the what we're bringing in 6.2 doesn't have a UI to it. It's it's a kind of an improvement of what was there originally with uh, filters. So right now you can you can hook into a filter to to say go and load this JSON from lots of different places, like and you can supply it. But it was not clever enough to save the json when you're doing json syncing back mm -hmm. to the, the location that you loaded it from so mm -hmm. that's kind of always been a bit of an issue 
So this fixes that. Mm. Um, are you presumably you're talking about? Are you talking about ACF Extended, which has the the no. UI aspect, or is this another plugin? It's another plugin, actually. So I mean, I've got a note of it here, so that I don't forget. It's uh, and I'll just share a link to it, shall I, on the um, yeah, that'd be cool Zoom chat. I'd be curious if this plugin starts using this feature. That'd be yeah, yeah. I don't know how I stumbled across it. Um, it's not been touched for a few years. Um, so someone saw the need for this and and yeah, it's just really, really incredibly useful. Um, and the other thing it does, so when I'm, if I've built that field and let's say um, it's defaulted to going into my, um, my uh, JSON folder within my theme, and then I upload the plugin and I'm like, oh shit, where's that field? So then I can just come back and look at the field on in the in the UI, drop, there's a little drop down field, and I can choose, oh no, pop that into my plugin, and then and then this this will remove it from the theme and pop it into the plugin. It's not without its bugs. There has been a couple of occasions. I can't I can't remember the exact scenario where on young sites I hadn't set this up early enough. I'd created a few fields, and then when I set this up my fields all just evaporated um but you know i've always had backups to call from so it's not completely squeaky clean, but incredibly the the ui aspect of it is incredibly useful so i'm building a field set and i'm just choosing from these these locations that have been predefined theme usually being the default and then a number of plugins that i've um, set that i've set paths for um yeah yeah this is the so, ui like file browser like to, to define or to pick what I folder can, you want to pull it would from? you like to see would you like to see what it looks like uh, if, I yeah, share, if i can share my screen way to do that i'm not too sure yeah, yeah i'm not sure we can delegate access so okay. th there is no so there's no ui to the feature yeah. um in okay. acf our theory there was that what we allow you to do is kind of set the the standard right so you you, you think well i want field groups to go here i want post types to go here mm -hmm. and kind of give you those examples most likely like in the in that github page in was just sharing there if you uh you know we give a whole bunch of examples basically of well i want to do this i want to do this because you know we understand how agencies tend to build with acf so we can put for, forward a bunch of those basically copy and paste snippet codes that you can just drop in mm. uh that would kind of solve the issue because if you were then creating a field group that was you know or a field group, the chances are you want your field groups to live together, right? Mm -hmm. Probably not want to move things around to different places. So making you define it in code kind of is where you're going to be writing the code anyway, right? So we felt like yeah, the sorry. UX is so doing it in code is probably the way to go. There's nothing mm -hmm. to stop us doing this in the UX though. So if you think that that is something that's useful, we don't really have well, I was gonna say we don't really have an ACF settings page to let you kind of define those paths, mm. um, but that is something that we might well have to implement at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, adding it as a as a field group setting, it's only something you could do, um, and we could probably even generate the yeah a, the sample code to drop in to allow that, mm. because we now allow you to add settings to the field group of, in the six point one. I think that was Matt, right? We had the option to add a tab to the actual fields setting, settings, field group spots, settings yeah. rather than the field settings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, cool. I mean, yeah, I'll be really interested to know how the how the rules setting works. So my, I mean, I've got no sort of concept of how we'll be defining those locations. So might we be saying, for instance, if a field group is so like with my events plugin example, if I've got a field, if I've got a field group and it's applied to the events post type, would, would that then say we'll store that in that events plugin where that you, you'd have to write that logic in the filter to, to yeah. sort of do that. I think the the different ways we've seen this being used um, to, to have to, to even want mult, multiple locations to load like the field group is people have built out um, lots of kind of different component field groups. Like this is the field group that, that has a button. This is this is for like a hero block and that they may be using like the flexible content field type and all of these things that then get loaded in. But they store that like an agency would store it in their plugin that ships with every um, site that they build. Mm -hmm. And they have a directory structure of like components that would be like one that's the button, one's the hero, one's the contact form or whatever. And the field groups all sit within that and they would want to filter in to say, okay, what is the, what's the name of this field group that's being loaded here? 
now let's go and look in our plugin and find it in our directory structure and go and load the field group that is in that sort of directory structure go and find the hero one and load that field group in that way um okay, okay. so the yeah these filters are sort of i guess with everything acf they're they're very low level that you can then do however you want to do with them to mm. to suit your um development workflow but obviously it allows people to build these things on top of it like this this agency acf agency workflow package mm. I'm, I'm not sure this will be something because actually this is something we've never heard about i don't think anyone on the team in terms of uh either just people requesting this feature and or this package so mm. this might probably be best served being used continue you know continue to use it and it doesn't yeah. look like the implementation that we've added for the save We'll probably change it because it looks like it's using it's like the load. The off, yeah, it's not yeah. Far off. So I have to. They'll probably have to see if it works with six three, uh, six two. Sorry, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. We'll put, um, we'll we'll start putting a UI around, like where to save. But this seems like a really good, helpful mm -hmm. package. I mean, that's the beauty of the ACF community in the sense that mm -hmm. there's all of these kind of third party either add-ons or packages mm -hmm. that that make life easier for, for very specific use cases, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No, that's really informative. Thank you. I, I, as I said, I, I saw it in the, in the release notes and, and wondered then whether actually, you know, this was, this kind of functionality was being, was being, um, was being bundled, but I'll continue to use this as long as it, as long as it continues working or continues being supported anyway. Yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, you've certainly given us ideas for the things we should add to the documentation on Jason, right. Based on what people actually want to do. So, that's that, that's my favorite thing about ACF chat Fridays is we get a lot of real world examples that kind of let us let us figure out where we should be spending time in documentation. Yeah, I mean, for me, early on, it 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 became clear that I needed to be separating fields from themes into plugins. Once upon a time, everything went a theme, and then I got a bit more plugin theme, you know, separate. Uh, and now it's quite often, you know, two or three or more plugins for a single website, and they all have their own um sets sets of field sets so so yeah this has been incredibly um incredibly useful yeah and especially if you're using yeah. blocks right kind of well until recently you didn't have a choice but for blocks to live in a plugin so mm -hmm. it made sense for the fields for those blocks to also be as part of that plugin yeah yeah absolutely um i've come with another question question if i if, is that okay to roll straight into it it, it kind of yeah, re sure. regarding safe paths and so i've seen i've seen acf sort of exp exploding with all this functionality like you know building post types and um and pretty soon building uh, options pages and custom taxonomies and all this kind of stuff and at first i thought oh, i'm not going to use this because actually i don't really want this kind of ui being exposed to clients so i'm actually quite happy just just you know pasting this into into plugins like i've, I've been doing for years but i have already found a use for it like where i've been just spinning up sandbox sites for clients to play with and i can really quickly just you know bang in a couple of useful uh, post types without having to um, uh, build a plugin or or a theme, so that that has been incredibly useful. So now, and especially like with options pages coming to the UI as well. Um, and apologies if this is in the docs and the release notes, and I've just just not seen it. But will, in the same way that fields and field sets built in the UI can be pumped into into our theme or plugin as JSON. Does the same apply to things like post types and custom taxonomies? So I can build it all locally and then it'll all just be pushed. Yep. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And you can even export them on the export page to get the code if you want to move them to, to native PHP code. Is it the same? Is it, is it into like theme ACF JSON? So if I if unless another save path was set. So if I if I built a custom post type, will it be would I find it by default in that ACF JSON folder? Yeah. And prefix with a name that makes sense, right? So groups, yeah. I think, prefix a group and options pages are options page underscore key. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. All, all logical. Fantastic. Um, and if you want to set the paths, as I said, to you know for different things, there's a there's a specific filter that you can mm. pass in. You know, that only triggers on certain post types to, to change the paths. Okay. Okay. Cool. Great. That's all really exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right. I'm uh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, as I said, I kind of in all of my examples, I've been focusing on on the agency workflow aspect of it because that's where that's where the field groups get complicated, right? It's uh, mm. agencies are the are the ones that have a generally a kind of point a bunch of startup you know, blocks or or 
not necessarily a WordPress block, but kind of, hey, this needs a hero. Mm. We've got this already. We can drop this in and go. So yeah, having that kind of functionality for options pages as well. And yeah, yeah. Those those kind of makes sense. And I've got to say, as like a as like a last a last thing, just kind of a, a, a um a thank you, I suppose, is like the whole ACF block generation thing like saved me such a humongous humongous JS learning curve thing. You know, like I honestly was uh, was was o- overwhelmed with custom block generation to begin with, and then and and now I you know I just build them all with 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 ACF, and it's incredibly useful and so so easy to use, even for blocks with no fields. You know, just just spinning spinning them up, knocking them out. It's great, fantastic. Nice. Yeah, uh, our next release, uh, um, 6.3, we're going to focus a bit more on the block side of things and kind of try and modernize it, make it feel a bit more like you're native in WordPress whilst keeping backwards compatibility. Let's see. Cool. Nice. All right. Thanks. I'll I'll mute myself and let other people go. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Thanks. We've got, got a pretty good question in chat, uh, Liam, that we've been talking about this whole week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Diego uh, asking about uh, WordPress 6.3 launching with basically blocks in an iframe by default. Uh, there's some context here, and that ACF is actually the reason why this didn't ship in in WordPress 6.2, because uh, in the in the first versions of WordPress 6.2 it was enabled, and and we were like, well, hang on, this yeah you can't put a jQuery library inside of an iframe and expect it to work because it's not coded to be able to look inside an iframe, um, and so they accepted that and kind of pulled back they tried to build a compatibility layer during the 6.2 dev and, and then realized that this just wasn't really viable because of, there's so many blocks that just aren't going to ever support that uh, so they were quite their workaround for that was well we use the iframe only if every block registered is version three um so acf blocks will stay version two and because they're registered by version two by default it won't trigger the iframe so you'll kind of be in this back and pat mode that won't use the iframe and everything will just carry on working like it does now. For us to get to the point where we can be v3 and in the iframe, that probably requires us deprecating the jQuery, uh, well, jQuery components that we use, so date pickers and things like that. We're going to have to move them to React libraries or the, the native WordPress components that already exist for that stuff. But for some of them, we're going to have to write our own components. You know, I'm thinking like relationship fields, for example all that kind of complex UI of picking the fields that are selected and things like that, that's all going to have to be custom. So once we do that um, and don't rely on having those third party jQuery libraries anymore, we can, uh, we can enable version three. Um, and yeah, that's our, our goal for honestly, probably, you know, the, the next few months, it's, it's not going to be a quick process. Um, yeah, I, I think one of the things that, that uh, at least, I don't know if this has changed, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe 6.4 is when they plan to to make this more of a strict uh, iframe around the, the editor where no matter what, it's going to be that. So there is a future state. We just don't know exactly when the timeline is for when that future state is where they'll uh, put the iframe for everyone. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I think you'll still be able to opt out, right? Because the certainly for the foreseeable future. It's kind of like the classic editor. There's going to be so many blocks that people have created that just can't work inside of an iframe. Um, and so they're going to have to have some kind of back compat layer for that. Uh, we're hoping to kind of ride that as long as we need to, because if you've got a site that's already running uh, complicated jQuery for carousels or something like that, you're using slick and it's embedded, all that kind of stuff is the, the thing you won't be able to preview anymore in the, in the block editor side. So. Yeah, and if 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 uh, if you're wanting to enable the iframe editor, just make sure that you have not a single block installed on your site that is v2, because one v2 block that's installed on your site will make it non iframe. I spent a little while trying to debug that, and I was just like, why is this not working? One block, <laughs> that's all I had. <laughs> and also to be more confusing, if you install Gutenberg as a plugin, so you get the latest version of Gutenberg, that overrides the version two require restriction and tries to use the iframe for everything. So. If you install the Gutenberg plugin, you'll probably find your ACF blocks look very weird in the back end. Um, if you try, if you support the edit form view, so that is, you know, the switching into edit mode and, and seeing the the block contents replaced with all the inputs. And that's in but, the, uh, main, yeah. the main editing. Yeah, in the main part editing. of the yeah. Yeah, the sidebar is always out of the iframe, so the all of our selections still work at that point. So we might be able to do something, you know. 
if you want to enable v3 early then it just disables edit mode right like we do already if you try and preview or if you're in the site editor which has been iframe since it launched that was that was my question liam if you're saying or we're saying that acf blocks are v2 and that's going to stop the iframe stuff happening but obviously we can't then become v3 compatible for what what are we missing out on from an acf blocks point of view in the the, the shiny stuff in v3 so there isn't there isn't all that much the main thing is about stopping styles that are meant for other blocks or for the you know the core editor from affecting your inside your block right um and that that is the main reason for doing this because it makes everything is kind of then unique to your block and that is an issue right we've had uh, acf 6.2 actually ships with a, a a fair amount of little hacky code to, to make buttons look correct because they, they've started to inherit theme styles just because you know there is no separation between blocks and the, the gutenberg editor itself so uh yeah I, th I don't think there's anything particularly you know kind of oh you're not going to be able to use this new feature or padding or something like that you know all that stuff still going to work um and any new supports and things like that should still work it's just that separation of styles that makes your life easier really if you want to keep things as a as a, a block that we're working towards uh diego also asked in chat if we're planning on supporting uh, core components in acf blocks and yeah exactly that diego would that's the aim is to swap from you know using our own input html to using the wordpress or the gutenberg uh component for a text input and a select box and all that kind of stuff going to look a lot more native as well as actually being easier and then allow us to to work with like the the iframe situation yeah exactly and we find the link to there's a there's a handy storybook of every every component that wordpress ships with uh to put that in chat there you can kind of uh use the components thing on the left hand side and you can see the things that you know the logical things that we'll use so date pickers are there color pickers are there and it's all rather than it being the the jquery equivalent and the things from the classic editor that that you're used to and was an actual advantage back in the early days of acf blocks because you knew what you were doing and things look the same we kind of hit the point now where people are more used to the block editor and acf feels feels wrong because it doesn't look like everything else so that kind of transition path is is where we where we're going to focus over the next few months yes uh yeah 6.3 is our next major after 6.2 obviously and that's that is going to be a, a heavily focused acf blocks release um but it's the more we talk about blocks and the more we talk about obviously improving them to uh, and improving the the way the acf blocks feature is built to keep it more up with core it's it's just so interesting to know like how far it's come from when elliot kind of i don't know how he did it very quickly and very like on his own in 2018 this is just before five wordpress 5 was released with the block editor and just pumped out the acf blocks feature to create that easy bridge for creating blocks with php and things have obviously moved on so much and so quickly within the block editor within gutenberg that we've now with a load of people and you know our, our customers and users heavily relying on acf blocks to build their sites for themselves and for clients that we we have to kind of keep moving forward with with acf blocks to keep it in line with core and the block editor so all of these improvements there th there's a lot going on and there's a lot under the hood that we need to do but it's kind of necessary because acf blocks is such a pivot like a critical piece of people's workflows um but yeah it just makes me chuckle thinking at elliot just going <laughs> i'm just going to make this easier i'm just going to make this i'm just going to do a php kind of like compat layer and just and 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 not have all of our developers worrying about react tooling and creating custom blocks with react and that's just turned into this this really hugely powerful and helpful feature yeah and uh i don't know if you if you've seen uh mateo over at, on the gutenberg team is working on uh, a pr that will enable you to display meta that is stored on a post inside any block so it, it's going to be a way to kind of 
it, I mean, to be honest, solve a massive issue, right? It's a, it's a thing that we've been talking internally about how, how, how do we build this, this thing that lives inside ACF that lets you inject an ACF field in any block, right? And that, that's obviously the, the ideal end goal, because if you've got metadata, there might be something you, that should be in the middle of a paragraph and trying to, trying to build a way of doing that. Currently, you'd have to do it as a custom ACF block that supported the paragraph and kind of knew when to, where to inject it. But that is something that the, the team are working on uh, at Gutenberg to kind of give you a way of inserting metadata anyway. And that obviously there's caveats to that. You know, if you've got an array field type, how are you going to handle outputting that? That's probably always going to live as an ACF block. But if it's a simple text field and you want to add it as the content of a header, then you should be able to do that natively, right? Without creating ACF blocks. So yeah. all that kind of stuff is, is going to be a, an exciting future, I think. And that's kind of something that's even like makes sense even without ACF. Uh, yeah. Because if you if you've got, you know, you're writing a blog post about a WooCommerce product, for example, and you want to write a paragraph about how it's now on sale for this price, you don't want to store that price in the HTML. You want to dynamically go and get that price from the post meta whenever the page is loaded, but you just can't like reference that post meta inside a paragraph or any other block text you know wherever you're going to write text so that it, it's a complete no-brainer for wordpress to get that done and uh yeah keep an eye out on the on the twitter follow us on twitter for you know info on chat fridays uh because we'll as we start building this we'll show it off more regularly and and kind of show you where we're at and what we're looking at and kind of work with you guys on on where we're currently at with what field support react components and you know we're still going to figure out how we're going to ship that because we think it's going to take us quite a while to get everything as a react component um but there's probably transition stages and, and things like that where we can we can start shipping things in, in the meantime and beaters and tests and stuff i know i'm not sure if any of you guys were, were around but back in the acf 6.0 days we kind of did a really early beta of acf blocks v2 um and yeah we built that with the community it was literally on GitHub, we have this massive long thread of loads of us, loads of us talking about, well, it'd be cool if this happened and then we'd go away and figure out if we could do it. And yeah, that's, uh, that's what built, uh, ACF blocks V2. So I suspect this will be ACF blocks V3. Ooh, nice name. Yeah. And I guess we're, we're talking about blocks a lot and we're talking about obviously the block editor and we're talking about building with the block editor, but you know, we. It, it, I always find it good to reiterate that ACF allows you to build in many ways with WordPress. It doesn't have to be the block editor. You could be building with Elementor or as a page builder with ACF fields. You could be using the classic editor and using repeater fields, flexible content fields or whatever. You, you know, we, we're still supporting those things. Um, but obviously we're talking about blocks as WordPress moves on further and further. Um, but I'm going to also drop a, a link into something that we've not yet publicly released or publicly announced. So this is a kind of nice sneak peek. So this is a way for you guys to, or for everyone to um, let us know about feature requests, improvements, um, have a look at what other people have asked for and vote and comment on these things. This is a public kind of product feedback board that we're, um, that we've just, just kind of launched recently. It will be, there'll be a link to it within the footer of the ACF admin pages in WordPress in ACF 6.2 and it will be on the release post as a sort of an official announcement but um yeah it's, it's nice to be able to share this thing with you because I think in the past we've had people request features and and uh, ask for improvements either through email support the forums twitter like all over the shop and and you don't kind of have an insight into what other people are asking for and we also don't then have a very public way of seeing what's kind of rising to the top in popularity. Um, so this is this is the new board that we've we've got. WP Engine as a as a whole are sort of rolling out this. It's a canny canny.io is the service that sits behind it, and they're rolling that out to other other products within WP Engine. So we get the benefit of that. We've got our own ACF board, and yeah, I recommend you taking a look. And if you've got anything burning, sort of pressing um, that you'd like to see, then yeah, please drop it, drop it on the board. You do have to uh, sort of authenticate with Canny through email, social, or whatever. But then you can then you can post and you can vote and you can comment. So yeah, I thought I'd, I thought I'd drop that in as a little 
pre-release nugget. Yeah, now when you when, when we say we filed your feature request, you can keep us honest yeah. and check. <laughs> yeah, and when you when it's been voted by like a thousand people and we still haven't released it yet, then you can probably come to the next ACF chat Fridays and say, come on, this is ridiculous. But hopefully we won't get to that stage. And that's Ian's job. So if that ever does happen, it's him that you should uh, you should send that to. Do. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was saying collect we've got collective responsibility in chat Fridays. It's not just <laughs> <laughs> nice oh yeah it's good also, to see uh, Kevin, Kevin you've been using that for flywheel yeah nice yeah I was going to share this as well I don't know if, uh, if if folks have seen this this is a WordPress shared a preview of what the new WordPress admin is going to look like um, and this is kind of one of the reasons why we are thinking our react approach and or sort of component approach to swapping to core components is a logical thing to do because at the point that this admin is available. Obviously, we're going to look even more out of date if we if we're using jQuery libraries and inside of this nice modern React flow. You've probably seen since six point eight, we've been making a lot of UX improvements, and DLR designer is is a genius when it comes to that stuff, in my opinion. Um, and thankfully, everything he designs is already kind of looking a lot like like the WordPress native stuff and that they're shipping. So we're we're excited that we should slot in really nicely into this new admin. Whilst, of course, making sure we're backwards compatible, because that's uh, the main thing about ACF. You don't want to have to be locked down to a WordPress version. Yeah, WordPress seems to be moving at quite a clip at the moment, like quite a pace. There seems to be a lot of, I don't know if it, anyone subscribes to like the make.wordpress.org blog stuff, but the posts that keep coming out about the admin, what's happening in 6.4 potentially, like, it seems to, I don't know if anyone else feels that, like the, the whole project seems to have got either more momentum or more direction and they're just, they're just going for it. And I'm not saying like it, that's either right or wrong the direction, but they just certainly seem to be going quickly in a direction. Yeah, I, I keep it's quite a hectic, hectic couple of years. I, I've, I found with, uh, with Gutenberg and full site editing and block editing, it's been, it's been mad. <laughs> I, I think yeah. we're we're looking at uh, six four it, for, at least from all of the the core contributors that I've been talking to, they're saying six four is going to be a quicker release cycle. So I think we might even see that before the end of the year. I don't 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 quote me on that, but I'm I'm pretty certain that's kind of the time frame of just a few months or a couple months is what we're looking at for six four, because uh I my work I work in the media team uh and and we've been trying to plan around just like one month of work basically to get all of our patches in before the beta for six four. So just something to keep your eyes on. <laughs> yeah, certainly quicker, a quicker release cadence than before, I think. I mean, personally, I'm just I'm really happy to see that that admin design finally published because if you look at you look at the state of WordPress plugins, you think about the like, gravity forms, right? One of the one of the other big ones and, and Yoast, which I can finally say, right? I used to say Yoast and Ian would yell at me. Um uh they've they've redeployed their own versions of, of their react admins recently right so they're shipping their own react clients and trying to they basically got to the point where they had to rebuild because they can't do what they need to do you know with this modern web app inside that legacy wordpress admin so we we've been there as well like we've been on the we've been on this kind of journey of how hey, we still want to look like wordpress but it's, it's getting really tough with all the things we want to do to kind of be confined by what the current WordPress admin is. So it's it's really great for us to kind of not have to reinvent the wheel ourselves in, in ACF's admin, only to have to then put everything back into something that still looks good in this new WordPress admin. Yeah, and, and the, the WordPress admin has been around since, I think it was like 2013 or something. It's, it's... Yeah, like, what is it, three dots? Six, I think yeah. it was, or something like that. Three dot five. I'm yeah. very old, and it's as long as I can remember, it's looked like that. Yeah, but it is gonna it's gonna be interesting to see because obviously we, as ACF as a plugin, as you said, we've got our own UI that looks different but slightly similar. Um, but there's tons of plugins that do their own things, and there's tons of plugins that add top level menu items. There's like it's a smorgasbord of like clashing themes and styles within the admin. So it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of rein that all in 
because it's not just core changing it's you've got to get buy-in from all the other plugins you've got to get them on board to make it look and and, and have everything extensible enough for us to as plugin developers to hook in and, and work within their new system but yeah it's going to be Add interesting notices are going to be really nice in the future that's the yeah. big one <laughs> well that they're, they're, they're changing anyway right there's a there's already a, a feature as a plugin toast notification system that is being built we met those guys at WordCamp europe uh and we'll make sure that acf is compatible with that as well just to kind of everything modernizing it, it's cool to see that there is that direction i know everything moves fast but yeah. i do feel bad for, for the guys that have just recently launched new admins in in their own custom react things and gonna have to try and squeeze them into this new new admin view oh that's an interesting uh Question here. Speaking of top level menu items, I love a plugin option to choose between top level or tucked away into tools. Yeah, you're talking about Kevin overriding like rogue plugin A that just puts itself as top level and then you can just. Well, lots, lots do. And, you know, sometimes, especially logging into client sites where they've gone wild and installed, you know, six or seven plugins in the top levels. Yeah, an absolute, you know, car crash. Um, I mean, ACF in its defense is always tucked away nicely at the bottom. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's one I, I came across using recently. There's a mail logging, a mail logging plugin which which I use to to track outgoing mails, and they just have an option that says top toggle top level menu item. And if you just uncheck it, it moves into tools. By default, it's top level, but yeah. if you uncheck it, it moves into tools. And I would do that on you know all the plugins if I could, because in, invariably, someone at the client end needs admin level access because they they need access to. They want to install a plugin they need access to menus whatever um and i don't really like going down the road of, of using these plugins that let you customize the admin but anyway having seen that in a, in that wp wp mail logging plugin recently i thought that's a that's a brilliant little addition choose between top level or not and then it just goes into tools gets tidied away into tools yeah that. yeah that's nice <laughs> and i guess acf is kind of lucky in the sense that if you're building it on your development site you want all of the menu items it doesn't really matter that are top level or not but then once you've defined everything in json or php code or even in the database you can ship and have your client site and you can use our filter to sort of turn off the acf yeah. menu item so they can't go and create their own fields or edit the existing fields because that's you know always a bit dodgy um mm. but yeah the the, the plugin ecosystem is hard because I get why plugins do it. They want top level. They want to be in your face, especially if they've got a premium version. Like this is just how businesses run. Um, but they want, but the putting that in the face of the content editor, who's not going to actually make the buying decision is, is worthless. And it's just giving them noise and making it look horrible. Um, so it's, it is this hard balance of how do you, how do you get that out there to like the developers, the site builders to, to go and upgrade but then not piss off the users like the content editors. Yeah, it's tricky. I think we are almost, well, we're at a natural close there. We've got a minute left, so it's probably a good time to wrap up. No more questions in the chat. This has been a really good one, actually. We've kind of covered a load of different topics and gone off on uh, nice sort of um, organic tangents, which is nice. So yeah, appreciate everyone for turning up. Um, and yeah, install 6.2, install the beta. Give us some feedback. Well, at least candidate now as of yesterday. Uh, and yeah, let us know if you find anything. Hopefully yeah. by the next one of these, we might have released the real thing. Let's, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do this again in two weeks. So yeah, see you. See you then. Thanks for turning up. And yeah, enjoy ACF 6.2 release candidate. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye.